What up, Shredder? It's Ed from Ed Shred, and you're about to learn how to snowboard in 20 minutes. Whether you need to learn what gear do you need to start, what's the proper riding stance, how do you get on the lift, how the heck do you make turns, and is it all worth it, you're in the right place. So if you want to learn how to do the most fun activity on planet Earth, objectively, not my opinion, then stick around, let's get it. All right, so maybe some girl you have a crush on invited you on a snowboard trip. Maybe your friends are out there shredding it. You want to get in on the action or maybe you've been snowboarding a while and you just know, am I doing this thing right? Well, we're about to show you step-by-step step how to get everything you need in line to go out there and actually get good at snowboarding fast because that's what we do. And just so you know that you're listening to somebody who knows what they're talking about, my name is Ed around edshreds.com, one of the best snowboard schools in the entire world. We've helped thousands of people all over the planet learn how to snowboard, not only from a beginner starting point like you're gonna learn today, but also all the way up to shredding the terrain park, which I know you're gonna get to someday. I also won a national championship back in the day when I was in college and I've pretty much structured my whole entire life around snowboarding. The day I turned 18, I moved from my East Coast home out of my parents' house across the country to Colorado just so I could snowboard every single day. Today we're starting from day one. Now the first thing you need to know before you even go snowboarding is what gear do you have to have? I'm wearing a number of different layers right now. Now I'm not gonna explain the whole thing in this video because I wanna show you how to ride before we get done, but we have a whole video walking you through step-by-step step what you need to wear to the mountain. So go check out that video now if you don't have that covered. Now, once you've done that, you're ready to show up to the mountain. We're here at the base area in Keystone, Colorado. That's at the bottom of the lift. Now, you have to take a big scary chairlift up to the top of the mountain, and we don't wanna make the mistake that a lot of people do, which is they take that chairlift up before they have any idea what they're doing. And then a friend the other day told me how she did that her first time, and she actually had to take the lift back down. So you don't wanna have to call ski patrol. So let's start at the bottom of the mountain with our snowboard. This has two components right here. We have our actual snowboard and these are called bindings. These are attached to the snowboard. This is what keeps our feet attached when we're riding down the mountain. Now, there's a million different types of snowboards that you could ride, but if you go to any rental shop or snowboard shop on the mountain, you can ask for a beginner board and they're gonna give you something that's a little bit shorter, a little bit softer, a little bit more playful. It has some give that's gonna be great for you to start out on. So just go ask your local snowboard professional and they will hook you up. Now, you're gonna to wanna to attach your bindings to your snowboard. Again, we have a full video breakdown of that, so I'm not gonna walk through step by step, but I like to set a neutral stance here. So in snowboarding, we have what's called regular stance, which is where I ride with my left foot forward, which is what I am, or we have goofy stance, which is what I ride with my right foot forward. Now, a little bit of trivia for you. It's called goofy stance because in the 1920s, Disney had the character Goofy riding a surfboard with his right foot forward. And that's where it got the name. So you can go tell that cool story to your friends. But you're not gonna know if you're regular or goofy until you do a little test. It doesn't really matter if you're right-footed or left-footed. You could be either stance. It's whichever one is more comfortable for you. So my favorite test is the push test. You just have your friend come up behind you and they're gonna give you a little push on the back and wherever foot you step forward with first is usually what you want to lead with on your snowboard. But since this can go wrong, you could get confused. I like to set up my stance just right in the middle of my snowboard, equal parts, nose and tail, and then equal angles on my binding so that if I decide, hey, I'm actually not regular, I'm goofy, it doesn't affect me too much, okay? So we're gonna set up an equal stance. I recommend 12 degrees in the front and 12 degrees negative in the back. So it's called a duck stance, which means we're pointed out a little bit compared to a pigeon stance, which is pointed in, which you do not want, okay? So we're gonna set up a duck stance, 12, negative 12. That means you can ride your snowboard either direction. Once we've got that snowboard set up, we're ready to get strapped in. So we got a couple different parts of your snowboard binding. The first thing you wanna realize is a lot of times this fills up with snow and we want a clean connection between the bottom of our boot and our binding. So we're just gonna clean that out there's any snow in it, we're gonna scrape off our boot and we're gonna put our heel firmly in the back of what's called the heel cup here. Now we're leaning up against the high back that just goes high up the back of your leg, easy to remember. This is the heel cup. And then we have your heel strap here. So we've got a heel strap and a toe strap. You wanna connect your heel strap first on your front foot. So notice that I have my left foot in here. That's because I'm regular. I'm gonna push up to the lift with my front foot. 
If you're goofy, you want to put your right foot in first. So we're only going to put one foot in so that we can push up to the lift. We're going to insert into the ratchet and then we're just going to crank this down like this. You can be rough with it, okay? You can do as fast as you want. You don't have to go slow here. And you can give it a nice good push and just crank that thing down. Now you do want to do what's called see the seam. So this toe strap, you want to actually put it directly over the seam of your snowboard boot there, okay? The old style bindings used to go over top like this. We don't do that anymore. We put them over the toe now. And you want to make sure it kind of fits center over your heel strap and your toe strap. So if this is way off or you can't reach the ratchet here, you're going to want to adjust your straps, okay? So just before you start riding, lengthen or shorten the straps as needed. So if we stand up with our snowboard, we want to make sure we're in a flat area to start because as you can see, this is really slippery, okay? The base of my board is very slippery. I'm immediately going to start to lose my balance. Now what you have to realize is your edges are what give you control on a snowboard. So if I'm slipping around, I can't find my balance, I just kick my edge in the snow, very easy, right? And then I can always lean on this right foot, but you have to realize once you start riding, your right foot's not gonna do you any good, your, your foot that's not strapped in. So ultimately, we're controlling our snowboard with the foot that is strapped in. Just kind of dig that edge in a couple times, start to get a feel, get your balance, and then we're gonna start to ride one-footed. I recommend you take about 30 minutes to practice riding one-footed at the base of the mountain before you ever get on a chairlift. And the reason is that riding one foot and getting off the lift is the scariest part of snowboarding for most people, even months or years after they started. And that's just because they never took the time to master this at the base of the mountain. Take the time, you're gonna thank me later. Now we do have a full video breakdown of how to survive the chairlift for beginners. Go check that out or join Shred School for our one-footed practice drills and you're gonna master this in no time. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is on a flat surface, we're gonna to start to learn how to push. What you wanna remember is you want all of your weight into the foot that is strapped in. If you're goofy, that's your right foot. If you're regular, it's your left foot. We're gonna turn our board sideways and with our, with our free foot behind us, we're gonna put all our weight on the front foot here and we're gonna use this kind of like an oar to just give us a little speed. Now you want just nice little kicks here you don't want to put your foot way back here. You don't want to put your weight on this foot or your board's going to go out in front of you. You actually want just a nice little kick. And then put your foot up on your board. Now when you put this free foot up here, we're going to push it up against our rear binding. You can just feel the side of your foot right up against that binding. That's going to give you the most control and kind of stabilize it in there. If you put it in the middle, you might start sliding around, might get scared. So just right up against there. And you can even kind of just scoot along like this. Now something to note here is I'm not bending over like this. I'm not leaning way on one foot or the other foot. I have a nice athletic stance. You can see my hips are kind of pushed back. I'm kind of sticking my butt out a little bit, but I have a long straight back standing up tall. So you want upright posture, bent knees, power in those hips. We're not straight legged right. We're not bending over just nice like this. I'm gonna reach my front hand towards my nose, and my back hand towards my tail because Remember, we're not skiers. If we were skiers, we would face the front of our body forward, but we're snowboarders. So we're gonna have our shoulders parallel with our snowboard. And then with a nice athletic stance, we can kind of reach for our nose, almost like we're being towed by a rope. We can just start scooting forward. If that feels pretty good and you haven't fallen over yet, let's try to get a little more speed. I'm gonna do some pushing and we're gonna do what's called skating on a snowboard. The next thing you're gonna do is we're just gonna show you how to slow yourself down skating on flats so you don't freak out and turn sideways. And we don't actually want you to have to use your edges too much yet. So it's just a nice little trick. We're gonna skate and then we're gonna hang our heel over the back and we're just gonna drag our heel in the snow. We can also do it with our toe. We can just drag our toe a little bit. This is kind of a cheat code. You don't wanna use this forever, but especially in the beginning, it's an easy way to slow down. So you can see that's an easy way to kind of save yourself. If you start moving a little too fast, get freaked out, just put that foot down in the snow, come to a complete stop and you're good to go. And you can skate wherever you want from there. All right, so we understand which foot's going in first. We know how to push, we know how to stop. Now we want to simulate getting off the lift because when you get off that lift the first time, 
you're gonna realize there's a nice little off ramp and you might freak out. So remember two things. Number one is all our weight needs to go on our front foot. Two, we're gonna keep our shoulders completely parallel and reach our front hand for our nose, okay? And if we do that, all we have to do is kind of freeze like this when we get off the lift. Now to simulate that, we're gonna find a very small hill at the base of the mountain, and we're just going to push up a little bit, turn around, and pretend we're getting off the lift and ride out straight. We wanna do that until we can do it comfortably five times in a row without falling or getting scared or slipping out. Now if you do it three times and then you fall or you slip out, start at the beginning, do it again. Again, the more you can master this up front, the less you'll be scared later and you won't have to worry about the chair at all, okay? We're just gonna push up. We're gonna dig our heel in like I showed you. Once we're ready, remember parallel shoulders, stand up straight, bend your knees, turn sideways, reach for your nose, and then drag the heel to stop. So that was a little bit bigger of a hill. Find as small a hill as you can. You know, if, if I was you and I was just starting out, once you feel like you got that mastered, it's time for us to get on the chairlift, okay? So the first thing you wanna know is go to what's called the bunny slope at your local ski area. This is a designated area for beginners to learn. Well, you have to watch out for kamikazes because not everybody knows how to stop yet on the bunny hill. It is the safest place to learn. Everybody knows that you're gonna be a beginner here. The chairlift is usually a little bit friendlier. The lifties are the people that help you get on the chairlift and those lifties are trained to help beginners with beginner problems. So you're gonna have a lot more fun here and then you can move up to the main chairlift. So let's go hop on that lift and then I'll show you how to strap in both feet and control the speed of your snowboard. All right, so when we're getting on the lift, we're just going to follow the lift line corral up to that red line that you see right before the lift. You're just gonna follow the people in front of you. Once you get to that red line, wait for the lift in front of you to pass you, and then you're just going to directly follow that lift out. So just do those little pushes out there and then come up to the next line, wait at that line. Once the lift comes around, you wanna look behind you over your back shoulder and you can kind of take that back hand, set it on the back of the lift and then slowly sit down in your seat. Now lifts can be, they can have two seats, three seats, four seats, six seats. So you wanna look at where you fit on that seat and make sure that if you're getting on the lift with other people, that you're lining up with your spot and you're not gonna sit on someone or sit in their spot so they get pushed off. All right, now we're at the top of the mountain. We gotta figure out how to get down. So the first things first, after you come to a stop getting off the lift, push away from the unloading zone. That way other people getting off the lift don't run into you when you're trying to strap in your snowboard. So push somewhere that is near the actual slope so you don't get stuck in the flat area and then we're going to strap in. So right now it's really flat. I'm gonna push over there and then I'm gonna show you how to strap into your snowboard. Okay, we are at the top of the slope. Now, notice how I'm standing here. I wanna control my snowboard. I don't wanna slide down the slope, so I'm completely on my heel side edge. I'm kinda of leaning on this back foot. So that's gonna keep me in control here. Now, once we strap in, first, let's make sure we're at the top of what's called a green circle. Every mountain has a rating system. Green circle, blue square, black diamond, double black diamond. You, as a beginner, wanna be on a green circle. So top of a green circle, we're just gonna go ahead and sit down, and we're gonna strap in both of our feet. Got bent knees. I'm gonna open up that high back. Remember, clear out the snow. Crank that ratchet down so that it's tight, but not painful. But we want a really tight fit there. And I like to tighten my other binding here. Now this is what's gonna make your triceps sore, okay? A lot of people after the first day of snowboarding are sore for a number of reasons. So. The first three days is gonna be the most painful. And I'm not gonna lie, learning to snowboard can hurt. So, couple tips. Number one, wear a helmet. There's a good chance you might hit your head as a beginner snowboarder. We're gonna teach you everything we can so that doesn't happen, but just so that we're safe, wear that helmet. Number two, the most common snowboard injury is wrist fractures in young females. If you wanna prevent the wrist fracture, first wear wrist guards, for the first three days at least. You don't have to wear them forever just to start wearing the wrist guards. You can also wear butt pads, things like that, if you wanna soften the blow and get rid of some of those bruises. The other thing is when you fall on a snowboard, your wrists are very fragile, okay? And if you stick your hand out to catch your fall, there's a good chance that's when you're gonna get hurt. I've done it myself. You have a lot more muscle in your hips, in your butt, you know, in your body. So if you fall, you can kinda of just tuck your arms in like this and just kinda of let your body take the hit. And that way you're gonna protect the most fragile part of yourself, okay? 
Now, I don't want this to scare you. I just want to make sure we minimize the chances you get injured out there so you keep treading and have fun. So don't be too scared. Snowboarding is a relatively safe activity compared to lots of normal things people do, but there are ways to minimize our risk. We're sitting down, we got both feet strapped in. This, as I said, is where your triceps are gonna get sore. A lot of times people are sore after snowboarding, not because they've fallen, but because they push themselves up, okay? So to get up from here, you need a little bit of core strength and you need some tricep strength. So you kind of just push your body weight over your snowboard and then push up and we're standing here. Now you're gonna start to slide down the hill immediately. If that happens, you can sit back down until you're ready or bend at your hips, kind of stick out your butt a little bit and pull up on your toes here and lean into the backs of your high backs. That's gonna lift what's called your downhill edge. Your downhill edge is the edge that is further down the slope than your uphill edge. You can see the uphill edge digs in going uphill, downhill edge is further down the slope. Now, because of the way gravity falls, anytime your downhill edge touches the slope, you're gonna fall down the hill. So what does that tell us? It means we always wanna be leaning into our uphill edge. It's not gonna change whether you're a beginner or a pro snowboarder. Immediately, I'm gonna bend my knees. I'm gonna stick my butt out. I'm gonna pull up on my toes and that's gonna keep me leaning up the hill so I don't start sliding down. Now, if I wanna to start to move, I'm just gonna kinda of like a gas pedal. I'm gonna push that down a little bit, but not so far that my edge catches. Again, edge is always lifted. The higher it's lifted, the slower you're gonna go. The less it's lifted, the more you're gonna to start to slide down the hill, okay? So try that, just like a gas pedal, push down, pull back up. You got that? So try this maybe 10 times in a row. Push down, pull back up. Once we've done that 10 times on our heels, we're gonna go on our toes. So we're just gonna switch where our uphill edge is to our toe side edge. So the way we do that, take our front hand, it's gonna hook it behind our lead leg, and just flip over. And this is kind of a comfortable position because I'm like very safely not moving. I kind of just put my hands down, I'm on my knees. But we're gonna get up from here again, just push ourselves up, and we're gonna practice that gas pedal technique. But this time our back is facing down the mountain. So I'm just gonna stand up on my toes. Remember, the downhill edge is now our heel side edge. If we touch that edge of the snow, we're gonna fall backwards. And we could even hit our head. So we don't want that to happen. And the way that I'm gonna prevent that is I'm gonna push my shins into my snowboard boot. I'm gonna bend my knees. I can even kind of get some hip flexion and push out to get my body weight into my toe side edge. So let's see what that looks like. And then we're gonna try that gas pedal exercise. Again, your front hand's reaching towards your nose, back hand towards your tail. Gas pedal. The more I lean down the hill, the more I move, the more I push my shins into the boot, the more I stop, okay? So it's all about your edges. All right, so now we know our edges are what control our snowboard. We know we keep our shoulders parallel with our snowboard. And that leaning into the uphill edge is what slows us down. And the downhill edge is what will cause us to not feel very good tomorrow. So that's not very fun just going down the hill like that. If we wanted to do that, we would just ski, right? If we wanted to go straight down the hill, we want to snowboard. So we're going to learn what's called a traverse. A traverse is where instead of going down the fall line, which is where gravity will take us straight down the hill, we're gonna go across the slope. So traversing is just gonna use the side cut, the shape of our snowboard, our edges, and it's gonna start to be a lot more fun.